Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your workstation to practice uh, whatever we learn in this course, uh, Kubernetes, how you can practice uh, working on Kubernetes. Uh, we'll be using Minikube. Uh, so I'll be showing you basically how to install Minikube on a Mac system or a Linux system. So this will be a very short video because the process is very simple. So if you're on a Mac, what you can simply do is brew install Minikube. And this will basically start installation of your Minikube. It will take some time around 10 minutes because the binary is pretty heavy. So it downloads everything and set up everything. And I already have it, this installed and I'm on a Mac. So I won't be basically doing this again. But once you have Minikube and if you're on a Linux system, so on Linux system, uh, we'll be using Vagrant and uh, to basically set up Minikube. Uh, the prerequisite for both, I mean for Mac and uh, Linux system is that you must have uh, VirtualBox installed. So VirtualBox is basically what Minikube uses to launch virtual machines uh, as your cluster, right? So in order to set up Minikube on a Linux system, uh, you can go to this uh, Git repository, which is Mintel Vagrant Minikube. You can clone this and go inside the repository and simply do a Vagrant up. And then you would have a mini queue basically set up running or up and running and you'll have your own cluster running. So I'll put this link in the description so you can just simply copy it from there. But it's the setup is very sim, very simple, right? It hardly takes 10, 15 minutes to set it up and you have your own cluster running. Once you have your cluster running uh, via mini queue, what you can do is on Mac, basically mini queue start. So this basically starts the virtual machine and it sets up Kubernetes. So we'll see. So it's starting my VirtualBox VM for me. So if you go to VirtualBox, you would see there's a VM running. So it takes around a minute or two to start up and it has configured everything on that. And it has a single node cluster. So you, there'll be a, just one node which would be acting as your master as well as your worker. So that would be a single node cluster. And there's a bad dog parking behind. I don't know. It just spoiled my video. But festival time, so it's okay. All right, so you can see it says preparing Kubernetes. The version, you can see the version of Kubernetes it's going to basically set up for me, which is I think the latest 1.19.2. I think it's the latest one, yeah. So you can see it says done, kubectl is now configured to use Minikube by default. All right, one more thing. Yes, so before you set up Minikube, you must have kubectl installed. So to install kubectl, it's very simple. Just go to Google and install kubectl. Suppose I am on Mac, so I would just say Mac. And the first link is actually from the Kubernetes documentation. And here you will find the complete instruction to set up and install kubectl. So kubectl basically is the command which you which we are going to use to interact with the Kubernetes API, the kube API server, right? Which I told you in the last video, the kube API server, how it is exposed and how do we communicate with it? We use kubectl. All right, so now when my cluster is up and running, so let's do kubectl get nodes. And you would see that it's just one node cluster the name of the node is Minikube. It's in ready state. The role says master, but it is also a worker. I mean, it will act as a worker as well, although it's just a master and the version of Kubernetes. All right, so what else can we do? So yeah, if you want to see how basically Kubernetes is set up on this, basically uh, Minikube, I think uses Kube ADM behind the scene to set up, set it up. I can say that because when I do kubectl get pods, hyphen n cube system so cube system you don't need to worry about what what i'm doing right now i just want to show you so basically i'm specifying a namespace in kubernetes environment and i want to get all the pods which are this which are there in this particular namespace right so you can see all these pods are there so you can see our etcd pod is there cube api server is there controller manager is there proxy is there scheduler is there storage provisioner are there so they are basically running as pods, right? So when you set up Kubernetes using kubeadm, kubeadm actually sets these up as pods and not as virtual machine. 
I mean, if you want, you can set these up as separate virtual machines. But when you install Kubernetes using kubeadm, it sets them up as pods, right? So like in this case. So these are running as pods. So that's why I can say that Kube, Minikube basically uses kubeadm behind the scene to set up a Kubernetes cluster. All right, so yeah, this is it for this video, guys. Uh, this was a very short one. Just wanted to show you how you can set it up. So in the next video, we'll start we're working with so initially i won't show you how to configure a cluster from scratch because that's what we are going to do at the end of the course uh, from the beginning we'll start working with pods deployments i mean we'll work with an existing cluster and then we'll work along the basically the uh, i mean the pods and the deployments and the services what are what are, what are these things in kubernetes and right so we'll see all that and then at the end of the course, we'll see how to set up a cluster from scratch. Uh, probably we'll do uh, Kubernetes the hard way by Kelsey Hightower, right? We'll do that, but in a different way. All right. So yeah, this is it for this video, guys. Please do subscribe to the channel before leaving. And thank you for watching.